Hi everyone and welcome to this week's Slowdown. The subject for this week is about golf specific fitness. Notice I'm in our Harbor Country Club Fitness Center here. Really, this is something, a video I should have done months and months ago, which should have been one of my first videos because of the importance of it. When we play golf, we have three pieces of equipment. We have the golf ball, the golf club, and our body. And there's really three points I want to make about the body and, and as far as using it as a piece of equipment. First of all, if you watch the PGA Tour, or the LPGA Tour nowadays, we see that the men and women playing golf on tour are getting bigger, stronger, and faster. They're becoming better, more conditioned athletes. And they're doing that so they can hit the golf ball farther, and they have more endurance during their round. So for us as well, if we can, if we can make ourselves bigger, stronger, faster, we'll hit the golf ball further, or we'll hit the golf ball the same distance with less effort to improve our golf game. Secondly, we teach quite a few people who have physical limitations during the golf swing. In other words, they can't put the golf club or put themselves in a position during the swing that I want them to because their body limits them. If we can learn to erase that a little bit or get rid of it completely, we'll become better at playing golf because we can put our body in better positions. And then thirdly, there's always people every year, a handful of members that get injured, either playing golf or something else, but they have to take a hiatus from golf because of the injury. So if we're in better physical condition, hopefully we can alleviate some of that uh, issue as well. Now, if you've ever really examined me, you probably don't want to take your physical fitness advice from Lumpy here. So what I've done today is come up to our fitness area. I'm going to introduce, introduce Justin Levitt, who is our director of Pumping You Up. Uh, so he's going to take the floor here and, and talk about ways that we can improve our physical condition for golf. Thank you. Hi everybody, yes, uh, we are up here at the Fitness Center of Holbrook and definitely are going to be utilizing some of the equipment up here today. Um, you know, as Liam said, I think it is important to, to think about, you know, what limitations you have and if there be injuries in a sense because how you utilize that time, you know, is very effective or very, needs to be very effective on um, incorporating it into your training. So, the main thing I want to work on today, kind of just give you a teaser on this, is, is kind of understanding how to segment your body. The main thing is, is looking at can I break down my lower torso from my upper torso in a rotation? Because we all know golf is about rotating the upper body and the lower body, but can you do it systematically? So what we've done, <clears throat> coming over here to the moment, we have the Paramount Functional Trainer. As you notice here, it's set up on two individual plate stacks, and what we have is we have just a cable that floats around and it has many different movements out of it. I'm going to make it simple for you today. We're going to kneel down on both suit. We're going to drop down on our right knee. What we're going to do is we're going to overlap our hands. You're going to make a V in the form right between your, your chest. Let your shoulders turn. As we're talking about this, consider your golf swing too. And what we want to do is we're going to pull this weight across, finding center of our body and moving across smoothly without any jerky movements. Now the main thing you're trying to do is trying to say, can I, no matter my flexibility range, I am able to keep my head locked in in the same place while rotating around the axis of my spine, which is going to incorporate more, not in the arms as you would think, but actually more in your core, around through the obliques, transverse and dominance muscle groups as you move this way. So if you notice how the shoulders stay level, we're just going to make a nice smooth movement here. All right, excellent. Obviously, I'll repeat that on the other side, but I don't want really to have my back to you. So the thing is, as you look at this exercise, you want to duplicate it on both sides, even though you may be left hand dominant or right hand dominant. You still want to balance out your muscle group and it makes your mind kind of more engaged into it too. Um, we have progressions also, which is very important, kind of showing you the versatility in your training. So you don't think, well, this is the only thing I can do. So then we can move up to a stability ball. So a lot of it's got to learn how to sit on this ball first and you can be easily shown how to do that. So at this point, I'm just going to sit on like I'm sitting on a chair. I'm going to scoot myself out a little bit away from this machine. It's just a cable. You can use a band. We've got resistance bands. I can show you the same exercise. And we're going to sit right upright this time, keeping your shoulders level again, rotating through the movement. Not only are you working on stabilization, as you can see, it wants to pull me over this way, and I want to sit upright, but I'm also working on strength, flexibility, because i got full range of movement going on here, and a lot of core exercise. There's more core. It makes it a little tougher to even talk. As I do this because it's working through the core, not necessarily through my arms. I'm not trying to have so much weight that I can't pull it. A lot of times you think of, as Liam was saying, you know, you are talking about strength, but it's not all about getting bigger all the time, it's about efficiency. 
as synchronizing your muscles in a path? Can you, can you engage them in, in a way that logically makes sense to engage when you hit that ball? So, as you notice, there are many ways to do this. The second phase, excuse me, the third phase is we're going to go with a more flexibility and movement pattern here without weight. Call this a Russian twist. So we basically lock in the hips, raise them up, hands are overlapping, and we rotate to the side. We're going to center back up. This is the other side we go to. So if we make this movement, you'll notice that it's a smooth, fluid movement that helps engage the, the core, keeping the glutes engaged. Smooth, no resistance, just your own body weight at this point. And then suddenly come back up on the ball. So I'm taking you through three different exercises today. Hopefully this would help you do a little better grasp on some new concepts instead of just standard, you know, got to do some bicep curls, have to do some, uh, you know, work on some legs, some squats and all this. And so next time we talk, we'll go into a little bit more detail on, you know, more stabilization and things that will help uh, perpetuate you forward to make more progress in your golf swing. Thank you. Good job, Justin. Uh, great job to Justin. Thanks for helping us out today. I've had a few of my students that have worked with Justin over the past year or two and really has done tremendous things to improve their physical ability to hit the golf ball. And so he knows what he's talking about. If you need more advice, just, just give him a call. He's happy to help you. We'll see you next week on the Lowdown. Thank you. Great job, man. That's awesome. Yeah.